CHGO White Sox podcast coming to you live from Studio A of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. I'm your host, Sean Anderson. Alongside me, the full CHGO White Sox crew. That's Vinny Duber, our CHGO White Sox beat writer. You can follow him at Vinny Duber. That's Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him at Ectorwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. You can follow me at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. You okay? Sorry about that. Oh, okay, it's all good. Uh, we're being produced today by Sarah. Hello. Hello. And uh, make sure you're hitting the like button. Make sure you're subscribing to our CHGO Sports YouTube channel. I know uh, NFL Draft Day is coming up, and uh, our guy Steven Nicholas, who... Mr. Hockey. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Hockey, who's now doing the Bears show. Oh, he's Mr. Football now. Yeah, yeah. He, want, he wants to see that to uh, Brian Urlacher subscribers by Draft Day. So, uh, you know, if, if you know somebody who thousand. doesn't know Brian about Urlacher, yet, thousand. Yeah, Brian Urlacher, yeah. thousand. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, we, we're about four thousand away. Uh, or so you know, four thousand friends. Tell t- tell am, them about us. Am I wrong, da- Davy Garcia? Thousand? Is that right? C fifty four. You should know as, that you're a Davy Garcia. Yeah, right. As the, you're running the, the fan club, the leader of the Davy train. Uh, as the you're the driving. Conductor. You're I'm, driving the Davy train. I'm the conductor. <laughs> One might say you're oh. you're going off the rails on a Davy train. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sixty four. Sixty four. Sixty four. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I'm uh, glad we checked. Who else is 64 in White Sox history? Do we know? No. No? That could be something we do later. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll do it later. All right. Uh, that's not, I guess, the headline of today's show. Alex McRae, Josh Osich, David Holmberg, Matt Perk, oh. Emilio Bonifacio, wow. and uh, Andre Rienzo. I'm so, shocked to learn that a position player wore number 64. Yeah, but when it... it that strikes me as like a one-game thing. Like Emilio Bonifacio showed up. They're like, here's your jersey. We didn't have time to check which number you wanted. We'll get it right by tomorrow, but the game starts in 20 minutes. 47, but he did start this year with him. So, I don't know. Uh, 64 was a number he picked before, too. Huh. He was 64 with the Cubs and the Royals. Wow. Um, but when he signed with the White Sox, people weren't bitching that it was a Royal. No. It's true. That's a relatively new sensation. Um, yes. Uh, Michael, Ro- Michael Lorenzen is not a Royal. Uh, Ken Rosenthal last night mentioned Michael Lorenzen and the White Sox interest in Lorenzen. Uh, so we'll talk about them possibly signing Michael Ro- Lorenzen. We'll also talk about two new teams that have been added to the discourse. Ken Rosenthal also reporting that the San Diego Padres and Texas Rangers are in, uh, interested in the Dylan Cease trade. So you mentioned it yesterday. You know, we never know, even though that things aren't being reported on. We didn't know that the Padres and Rangers were kicking tires, and here they are. Well, and not only that, too, it's like if you were to make a list, as we did during the offseason, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were to make a new list of, like, here are the most logical landing spots for Dylan Cease based on teams that are competing for division titles and playoff spots and need pitching and blah, 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 blah. Would you put the Padres on that list? I mean, I'm sure Chris Getz will take the call of any major league team, but the San Diego Padres, kind of a head-scratcher as to why you would be trading for premium talent when you seem, seem, miles away from both the Dodgers and the reigning National League champion Arizona Diamondbacks out in the NL West. But like I, I, mean, that, I guess that illustrates the point as well as anything that we never know what twist and turn this is going to take and where it's going to end up. Yeah, and the Padres, I hear what you're saying, Vinny, and they have done nothing but pretty much purge their roster. We're losing Lugo to the Royals, so we were going to get him eventually. Losing Waka to the Royals. And then, of course, trading Juan Soto to the Yankees and getting that package back, Michael King, etc. So, yeah, it looks like their starting rotation is pretty much set, even though it's not that great as it was last year. But I always never put away Jerry DePoto and never put away A.J. Preller. Those people love the trade. Uh, A.J. Preller in particular and he's a he's a guy that you can fleece. You can fleece easily on this. And remember, he has no oversight because the sadly enough, Peter Seidler, the owner, died last year. I think anybody in this position that AJ Preller has been in in the last couple of years in his career would have been f- long fired ago, long time fired. And I, you have a good point. I mean, they were the they were in the NLCS two years ago. Two years ago, <laughs> but last year was the year they're supposed to go and ascend to the next level. And no, it's not going that way right now. And AJ Preller has been both fine for doing some mishandling of medical records and also has been really bad at acquiring great talent and keeping that great talent eventually. So well, he's been very good at it 
at first. But and you then, got Machado. Yeah, they he's get, got Machado and Bogart. They got the, both the Uptons. And they got both. They got Tim Krimble. All these people. Yeah, they have people there. Yeah, but I'm saying Musgrove, that AJ always Darvish. gets like fleeced. But also sometimes he has some good things going for himself. So if that was the team that wants the White Sox deal and cease. I'm dealing with him much more than I'm dealing with the Yankees because it seems like the Yankees want to fleece the White Sox. AJ Preller seems like a more uh, even-handed guy because his trades sometimes go to the other team, and he just wants that superstar on his team, hey, like the Juan Soto deal. I mean, it doesn't seem like Chris Getz is giving in, so even if the Yankees want to be uh, all puffy chest uh, or puffy chested, I mean, you know, it doesn't seem like Chris Getz is giving in. Uh, he knows what he wants. You mentioned uh, counting out Depoto and uh, Preller. This was last updated on the 15th or 1 through 30th teams that would be acquiring uh, Dylan Cease. Not, not the 15th of this month, which haven't ha- hasn't happened yet. I'm guessing no. that's the 15th of January. Oh, sorry, I thought yeah. I said that. January 15th. <laughs> uh, so it hasn't been updated since January 15th. Uh, January 15th. Uh, but at 16th, I had the Padres. And at 17th, I had the Mariners. So there I am, counting out Preller and Jerry DePoto. Uh But I had the Yankees at 1 and the Orioles at 2. So... Uh, Rangers at seven, so I don't think it's too sh- too shocking that the Rangers in- are involved. Uh, it seems like the Orioles Orioles are going to let the Bradish thing play out. They got Corbin Burns, and they seem fine with having all of their amazing prospects who are good at baseball. Fine, uh, and then the Yankees. We got more news on Garrett Cole. Uh, it's going to be one to two months at least mm-hmm. for Cole, and he's going to head out to California to get examined in person uh, for his ligaments. So it hasn't been really ruled out. Uh, Tommy John surgery yet. Uh, I believe Otani saw the same specialist, uh, didn't uh, immediately get Tommy John or get diagnosed that he would have to get Tommy John, saw the specialist, and then got Tommy John. So we'll see how the Garrett Cole stuff plays out. Uh, But Michael Lorenzo, let's go into this topic now. Uh, Is it surprising that the White Sox are still kicking the tires to add to this rotation? Is this because Michael Kopech is so bad? Um. Well, those are two questions. <laughs> those are two I'll, questions. I'll answer, the, I'll answer the second one first and say no. <laughs> kind of for the same reason I'll answer the first one and say yes. Um, we basically heard from Chris Getz that his he was happy with his offseason work back uh, right before spring training started. Mm-hmm. There wasn't really a implication there that there would be anything else that happened, and the only things that did happen from then on out were those – flyers on minor league contracts that you saw all through the first little bit of camp and still in the last week even with with Brad Keller but uh so yeah I'm surprised just because this is a White Sox team where the expectation on the outside at least is that they're not really going to be competing for much this year or contending for much I should say uh why would you go out and spend money on a pitcher that would help you or help any team I you know do reach that goal, which the White Sox perhaps don't realistically have. Um, It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, to be honest. Now, that being said, here we are at this point in the offseason. Things have progressed, you know, to the point where a guy who maybe was looking for a multi-year contract at a certain price point is now the market is dictating that he's going to get a one-year contract at a much lower price point. The White Sox maybe see that and say, we'll roll that, we'll, we'll make that bet with the idea that, hey, come July... We could really get something good for a long-term setup for him. But uh, this guy is obviously a pitcher who was good last year. He was traded at the deadline last year. He made the all-star team last year. Uh, the White Sox got to see a lot of him because he was on the Tigers for the first part of last season. Um, but it doesn't make a ton of sense to me other than sign and flip. And usually sign and flip guys are not of that all-star caliber. Mm-hmm. Uh, but perhaps the market has worked in their favor uh, to make him that kind of player this right now. Exactly, Vinny. I can see the White Sox seeing uh, Michael Lorenzen at the beginning of uh, free agency and being like, hmm, nah, he probably wants X, Y, Z dollars that we're not willing to have right now. And now that the market has come down to him, it's March time. Michael's probably a little desperate. Uh, his age is probably a little desperate. And he can see that the White Sox have starting rotation options, but he could probably look at that list and say, like, I'm better than most of those people on that list. And like you said, the White Sox interest would be to sign and trade him like immediately if he does the things he did in uh, Detroit. I think it was like a a three-and-a-half ERA guy Mm -hmm. and familiar with the division, of course, because he did pitch there last year. And so if they can get a guy of his caliber, you feel a little bit better about the starting rotation. At least I would feel a little bit better about the starting rotation if you have a solid rotation guy like that. But I don't know who leaves. I mean, I know that we've talked about Michael Kopech being given – 
all the chances to fail until it is exhausted to 100 percent and but if you bring michael lorenzen around he's gonna be the guy that's sacrificed i believe her they're gonna trade dylan sees understood that that's but who what if leaves they, the rotation but no, what if they don't well i guess you know it's it's, in, a, it's in an article within maybe one is about trading on the other yes, yeah. Yes. But, yeah understood I, well no i mean you just asked that question i think i think if you're looking for an answer, I don't think it's less about, you know, Chris Flexen or Michael Soroka or Michael Kopech. It's more that they trade Dylan Cease. Yeah, but I think if I think independent of trading Dylan Cease, you could use him, Michael Lorenzen. And also, I don't think if you do trade Dylan Cease, you don't need necessarily need a Michael Lorenzen in your rotation with all the rest of the options. I just like the idea of just going after better players with Dylan Cease, you can trade both of them at the trade deadline. Yeah, no, I'm fine with picking up Lorenzo, and, and I, I think they're going to trade both of them if they do, you know, sign Lorenzo into a free agent deal. Uh, what I think your first, you know, uh, knee-jerk reaction was, you know, why do you need him? I think you see Nick Nestrini strike out seven in three innings. He's I think good. That he's, he's real pumped about possibly trying to make the, uh, the opening day roster. I think they'll likely send him down to, to Charlotte and see what he can do, but... I think Nick Nestrini is going to be a Chicago White Sox in 2024 at some point. So, you know, Michael Lorenzen can go get you a prospect. He's a major league pitcher. If someone doesn't want to sign one. him, you have money, go sign him. A good one I, at I, times. He had yeah. a 350 ADRA <laughs> with the, the, the Tigers. I think you mentioned that. Let's play a little game. Yeah. You mentioned that he had some uh, experience in the AL Central. Played a little games against the White Sox. 13 and two-thirds innings. How many earned runs did Michael Lorenzen in 2023 allow to the White Sox in 13 and two-thirds innings? I know it wasn't oof, probably like three. I'll say zero. It's not three. It's not zero. One. It's one. Okay. He had an ERA of draft. I got prices right at point six six. Uh, and uh, God bless to the comments. Husky Bardo saying Sean will always defend Kopech. Where did I defend him? I'm just saying they're trading Cease. Yeah, but I think also when he was with the Angels, didn't he take a no-hitter or something way deep oh. into that game? And then in the ninth inning, the White Sox hit him around a little bit. He threw a no-hitter last year, is that right? He did, but right? I think when he was yeah. with the Angels, it was something severe here at Guaranteed oh, against, Field. specifically against May the White, first. White Sox. Yeah. May 1st. Uh, and then they touched him up in the ninth or eighth inning. Yes. Uh, it was. So I was probably there. Uh, White Sox scored five in the uh, ninth inning. Yep. Uh, they lost six to five. Uh, Lorenzen, ooh, who started the game for the White Sox? What year? Twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. So just year before last. Lance Lynn. No, Lorenzen went eight and a third, nine hits, three earned runs, two walks, two strikeouts, hundred pitches. That's a classic. That is a classic line against the White Sox. Sixteen ground balls in a hundred pitches in eight and a, eight and a third. Kopech. No. Cease. No, it's a big free agent signing. For the White Sox? For the White Sox. In 22? Not in 22, but it was a big free agent signing. Uh, Dallas Keuchel. Dallas yes. Keuchel. Yeah. AL Cy Young. Dallas Keuchel uh, started that game. He went five innings pitched and was relieved by Ryan Burr, Jose Ruiz, Tanner Banks, and Matt Foster. Uh, Two and, of those guys are still in the organization. Hey, uh, Tanner Banks, underrated. I think that that word was written and def- made up when someone first saw Tanner Banks. I think Tanner Banks is like uh, Jack McBriar, uh, M- J- McBriar in 30 Rock, where he's just lived multiple lives. Like, I think there's a Tanner Banks in the 1800s, a 1700s, 1600s. That man's just been around. Uh, anyways, Interesting theory. Thank you. Um, I had one more joke. Um, Lorenzo would be the best free agent right fielder that they've signed in the past 10 years. <laughs> True that. Thank you. True that. Um, he had like a... He can hit, right? Cr- 710 oh, yeah. Yeah. career OPS. That's good. There you go. You got that's another, better than Nomar Mazzaro right there. You got there. another bat on the bench? Hey, I, I mean, maybe that's why. I mean, let's get real interesting. You definitely you know, know he can bunt. You know he can bunt. You know he'll run. He's probably fast. Um, so, I, 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 you know, there, there was one joke for you. But uh, Lorenzen's interesting just, too, because he's uh, consistently gotten ground balls uh, over... I think what his career rate's a 46% ground ball rate. Uh, last year, it was a little lower. But the real interesting thing is the Tigers picked him up and were like, we're going to make you a starter. Mm-hmm. He pitched over 100 innings once, and that was his rookie year when he was like 23. And then the Reds made, used him more in relief roles. And then the Tigers are like, nope, we're going to let you be a starter. So last year was really his first year 
31 years old, being a true starter. And he went out and did great. Again, 358 ERA. Um, his forcing fastball was a huge help for him. Um, usually he was more sinker dominant, and now he's more throwing fastballs, forcing fastballs higher in the zone. And the one thing, too, is he was walking a lot of guys, usually a walk per nine around like four, uh, you know, Dylan Cease levels for you. Um, last year it was under three. It was like two point six so uh, he was just more consistently in the zone I don't know if the Tigers are just sick um like I think the real thing that I've learned in looking up this Michael Lorenzen stuff and being reminded of what you brought up his uh great pitching performance on May 1st 2022 against the White Sox um the Tigers got a lot out of him and they have this kid, Jackson Job, who's throwing like 101 mile per hour, uh, forcing fastballs in spring training. They got Tariq Skubal, Skubal, who's now throwing like 100 miles per hour. Uh, Jack Flaherty has like pinpoint command. It's just scary that the Tigers saw Michael Lorenzen and turned him into an all-star. Like, what are they going to do with people with real talent? Like, yikes. Uh, so that's what I've really learned with this Lorenzen thing. Because I'm, I'm all for bring him into the rotation. Trade him at the deadline because that's what you should be doing. I mean, if they if they were to trade Cease before the season starts and then sign Lorenzen, Lorenzen's their best starting pitcher, right? What was the question? Seti? If Cease uh. is gone and Lorenzen comes in, Lorenzen's their best starting pitcher, mm -hmm. right? In ter at least in terms leagues. of what yeah. he did yeah. last year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he yeah. he did struggle once he went. Yeah, Fetty could very well be. Eh. Transformed from what he was uh, the last time he pitched in the major leagues, but in terms of what. Major League success in 2023, Lorenzo would be clearly ahead of the rest of them, right? Yep. Yeah, but I'd take Fetty. Resume-wise, Lorenzo has a better resume. I think Fetty would have a better 2024 than Oh, yeah, very, which is very possible, yeah. Um, yeah, AJ said, to be fair, he was barely an all-star. It's the Andrew Benatendi. It's the they don't that put little that, star know. next to his name. Right. Yeah, yeah they don't uh, put that on the uh, on the bio. Yeah. Right. Barely an all-star. Ha had to be an all-star. We I hear had to be included. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's take a break. We'll, we'll let you know about uh, some of our great sponsors. Uh, and then uh, we'll jump into the Rangers and Padres as possible trade candidates for uh, Dylan Cease. Uh, Sarah, if you could scroll up. I think Fred had something about an emergency podcast. Uh, just wanted to bring that up. If Cease gets traded at 2 a.m., I'd be down to jump in a chat for an emergency pod. Fred, you might get to host that pod if well, it's at 2 a.m. Because I don't know if you're rousting us out of bed. I'm a heavy sleeper. If I am asleep at that point, I will not be getting up, mainly because I don't think even a hurricane or a tornado sir siren, I don't think there's hurricane sirens. Oh, it's probably. A, maybe. There yeah, should I mean, be. Never, <laughs> um, I hope so. But I don't think that would wake me up. Uh, oh, it's okay. It, it's, oh, thank you so Look much at Sarah. Sarah for being so kind and generous. Uh, you know that Natalie Merchant song, Kind and Generous? They wrote that about Sarah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I... If I'm up at 2 a.m., I'll pull a Cody, and I'll, I'll do an emergency pod podcast if I trade seats. That was my big worry last night. Was I hope you're not up at 2 a.m. Go to sleep. <laughs> hey, Herb. Yeah. The horrors I, keep me up. I will, I will be up, and I'll host it. I will not call you because I know yet you got to get your, your beauty rest. So, Vinny, I won't call you either. Well, I'll need, here's what I'll need. I'll need a call. A text isn't going to do it. Yeah. I'm, a call yeah. might wake me up, but a text won't, will not See, wake me up. And, then, we'll, disturb, and then we'll just so do like, a live show when you guys wake up in the morning. I'll just so you'll be hosting an emergency Dylan Cease podcast for like six hours? No, not that long. No, <laughs> no just no. waiting for us. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing thirty minutes. Hey, that was the trade. That's what the people are. And then when we wake up, we'll do a real show in the studio. Yeah, hey, we're, we'll, we'll be around. Uh, if I'm up, I'll do it. Uh, anyways, uh, let's let do you it know doing regular ass hours, Chris Getz, please. Right, do it at five thirty. <laughs> While we're live, that'd be great. Uh, we don't have to do an emergency podcast. We're we're sitting right here. Uh, let us let's let us let's let us, let's let you know about our friends over at CD One Price Cleaners. Our friends over at CD One Price Cleaners offer one low price. Customers save over thirty percent on their dry cleaning bill by switching to CD One Price Cleaners. They have a simple and transparent service. Other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type. CD1 Price Cleaners, in the name, does not. And uh, they might upcharge you other cleaners uh, and make you pay a different price each time you visit. At CD1 Price Cleaners, they charge one low price for any garment. Even if you have a mustard stain jersey like Herb, uh, it's the same one low price each and every time. And they have a fast turnaround. Uh, CD1 Price Cleaner has your order ready the same or next day. Other cleaners take two to four days to have your garment uh, ready 
You'll get a text alert when your garments are ready as well. Uh, they send you a text when your order is ready for pickup. They also offer dry cleaning, wash and fold your laundry, uh, to wash your blankets and comforters. They also offer tailor and alterations along with leather, leather cleaning and area rug cleaning. So visit chgo.cdonecd1.com. The link is in the description. That's chgo.cd1.com. Once you're there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or online pickup and delivery coupon options. So go check out our friends over at CD1 Price Cleaners. I want to tell you guys a story. It's a story about Wisconsin innovation. One day, a man, let's call him Jacob Leinenkugel, was walking home from the Wisconsin equivalent of the Jewels, which I believe is the Piggly Wiggly, and he had a big bushel of lemons. Mm -hmm. And he's walking back home, and right next to his house is obviously his beloved brewery because he's Jacob Leinenkugel, right? Mm -hmm. And he tripped on, let's say, a hunk of cheese. Oh. It was just on the side of the road because it's Wisconsin. That, that cheese just is everywhere. just everywhere, right? Uh, and the bushels, they went flying into this beer vat. And he went, oh, no, my beer ruined, question mark. But then he went over, probably took a ladle, maybe a small cup, drank what was in there and went, mm-mm, good. I think that's <laughs> the, the saying for a different company, but that's what he said. And he said, I think I will name this Summer Shandy. What a tale of genesis uh, of, of Wisconsin innovation and Wisconsin innovation. Uh, and now because of that fateful day, you can go down to wherever beer is sold and get your own can of summer shandy or bottle or my preferred method of distribution, a pitcher. Um, and you can take it wherever you'd like. You can take it to the lake for a wonderful picnic and a wonderful day of drinking summer shandy. You can take it down to the parking lot at Guaranteed Rate Field and have yourself a wonderful summer shandy tailgate. You can take it back up to its homeland in Wisconsin, paddle around in a canoe with a big case of summer shandy with you, and enjoy that wonderful, wonderful day. It's a phenomenal beer. We love to drink it here. But, of course, even if it's not summer, which 60 degrees outside, it's, it's summer. But even if it isn't, you know, you've got a whole sunset wheat situation that you can choose from, a whole lakeside cherry situation you could choose from, maybe a honey vice, maybe a berry vice. Maybe you cross the border and you get yourselves a Liney's original. I'm thinking so much about Dylan C. So I'm thinking about the juicy pear one. Ooh. Or the juicy peach the one. The juicy peach, because he's from the peach no, state the, of Georgia. Yeah, that, that was what I was going for. Absolutely. Pears are juicy, too. So yeah. uh, there is just so much great stuff that comes from Wisconsin Innovation, and Line and Kugels is our favorite result of that. Now, here's the part I have to read. Here it is. Flavor life's simple moments, like, you know, tripping over cheese, with Lining Kugels, the official craft beer of the Chicago White Sox. Go to liney.com slash chgo to find delivery options near you. That's L-E-I-N-I-E dot com slash chgo. Or pick up Lining Kugels pretty much anywhere they sell beer. Lining Kugels, flavor the moment, celebrate responsibly the Jacob Lining Kugel Brewing Company, Chippewa Falls, Yes. Uh, we do also want to thank our new diehards, Lauren, Jeremy, John, and William. So thank you for signing up. Uh, I didn't even realize yesterday was 312 day. It was. That's cool. Chicago day. Yeah. Sometimes, well, so, Sean, like, for some of us, every day is 312 day. Well, that's the thing. It's like it, there's 312 day, which is Chicago day, but then also March 4th is Chicago's Correct. birthday. Yes. Yeah. So that's a lot of celebrating Chicago in one day. Today is the well, not one day. day. In nine days. Well, okay, but it's like it's kind of like you know <laughs> halfway to St. Patrick's Day isn't nine days later. It's in September when they wear the green jerseys. Sure. Yeah, but it's not also halfway right. either. But also, yeah, but also, Sean, you don't need an excuse to celebrate this wonderful city that we live in. That's true. You could buy a shirt from our Chicago collection and celebrate oh, it every day. Wow, look, look at in you. in in wow, look at Vinny, look at it, and Sarah right on point too. But Chicago Day yesterday, today's Detroit Day, tomorrow's St. Louis Day. Pizza-wise, you go right down and you go from the best to a nice one to the one of the worst. St. Louis has pizza? Oh, well, it's, it's not good. Whew, friends. Whew. It is some of the worst of all time. God bless White Sox, Tom. That explains a lot. He said today is 312. Every today day is, is 312. Today is March 13th, White Sox, Tom. <laughs> God bless you're living, you. You're living in the past, White Sox, Tom, but I'll allow it. Well, we know that. Uh, anyways, uh, all right. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and uh, Look at Mailman Jack with the Liney's original at the wedding. Tremendous. That's a good wedding beer right there. Are they there. like an original oh. brew? 
Liney's original is, oh, is a type the, of beer. Okay. I, that's yeah. what you read. And I, my ad read. belief okay. is that you can only get it in Wisconsin, but I could be wrong. Hmm. All right. I haven't seen it down Things here. might have changed, but I, you used to only be able to get it in Wisconsin. Um, things have changed, at least on the front of Dylan Cease. So let's go well to done. the uh, Western front from Ken Rosenthal, who is reporting. Uh, early Tuesday, he heard the Texas Rangers might be close to acquiring Chicago White Sox right-hander Dylan Cease. Usually when you get close to doing something, I, I start bragging about it before the deal is done. Uh, the tip turned out not to be true, Damn it. at least at the moment. Mm. But two sources briefed on the talks confirmed the teams engaged in recent discussions. Uh, Ken continues by saying, which makes sense. There are growing indications that the White Sox are getting more serious about trading Cease, and the Rangers will begin their championship defense in 2024 with a patchwork starting staff. As a Ranger person said, speaking on condition of anonymity, uh, said, have you seen a rotation in the first half? Uh, Ken continues to go on by adding, the reason why, again, Dylan Cease is so attractive to these teams is because he's cheap. Herb, you mentioned that the Padres owner died yep. the texas rangers don't have an rsn or it was very just up in the air they didn't have a line of money that they thought they would have so it's not really advantageous of them to go out and spend money even though they have all of the money that uh what's that one uh, war company that uh that sponsors them i got a you. war who makes company the, who makes the who yeah. makes the planes i can see um Lockheed Martin. Lo yeah, Lockheed Martin. Ah. Even though they have the wallets of Lockheed Martin, uh, they can't afford Jordan Montgomery. Okay. Um, Are they? Is that a Dallas company? It's a Texas company. Gotcha. They make all the military stuff. Gotcha. Uh, but anyways, uh, Cease is attractive because he's, he's so damn cheap. Um, so were my frustrations yesterday of thinking the White Sox were playing the game by, you know, leaking out to the, some sources that like, oh, there's another team that's not the Yankees that are throwing out a top 100 prospect. Like now we actually have Ken Rosenthal giving a little bit more color to this. Uh, is it going to be the Yankees? Is it going to be the Rangers? Is it going to be the Padres? Is Dylan Cease starting for the White Sox on opening day? Like what's happening here? The Padres season starts in a week. Oh yeah, they got to <laughs> in Korea. They go to Korea versus the versus the Dodgers. I think that I don't know if it's easier when the teams are located in the same area, like how the White Sox are in Arizona, so are the Padres and the Rangers, while the Yankees are in Florida. And this is why, because people have been and scouts have been at each other's games looking at the players. But I think that at the end of the day, that Dylan Cease will still be a White Sox making that start on March twenty eighth for the White Sox. I don't know if it's uh, quick enough for them to get a deal done and to have the players that the White Sox both want and the, the either the Rangers, Padres, or Yankees are willing to give up. They're just staring at each other. It's like, who's going to blink first? And the, so far, Chris Getz is not blinking, and he's engaging the right people. As I said before, A.J. Preller is a perfect person to engage in because he, firstly, has a lot of prospects to deal out, and secondly, loves to trade. And then, like you said, with the Rangers, their rotation, while it's strong, you got Ivaldi, you got Gray, you got Dunning, it falls off the table after that. You get, I think, Andrew Heaney is in the rotation, and then, like, a rookie's in the rotation. They would probably, as we were talking yesterday, Vinny, would want to try to compete with the Houston Astros and the Seattle Mariners in that division. And so that rotation, while strong, isn't as strong as they can be and those two other guys that they have that are injured right now, you can't count on Jacob DeGrom to ever pitch solidly for any amount of time. And then Max Scherzer is like, like 48 or whatever he is. Tyler Manley, too, Well, on and the I, IL. And I mean, and I'll, say, I'll yeah. say this, Herb, too. Like, you, we, we talked yesterday about this team trying to compete for that division in the, NL, in the AL West, even though they won the World Series. They're also probably trying to win the World Series again. Yeah. And they might look over at the Los Angeles Dodgers – and say, oh boy, that rotation. How are we going to go toe to toe with that? Well, the a way you go toe to toe with that come October is by having Max Scherzer, Jacob Degrom, Nathan Evaldi, and Dylan Cease. Yep, that's a pretty good way to go toe to toe with the Dodgers. Even though the Dodgers have you know all the guys that they do, um, you know it, it's an arms race. It, it's it's a, I mean in this we're talking about pitching, so. It, more literal, but uh, it, it, it is it, it, it is an arms race, and you know just because you might look at the Rangers and say, "Oh, that lineup, they're going to continue to hit." You know, they beat the they beat out the Astros last, or they didn't beat out the Astros last year, they but they beat out the Mariners last year. They outlasted the uh, uh, Astros in the playoffs last year. Um, 
they still obviously are going to have to, even you know, if they're going to repeat their title, are going to have to go through the rest of the American League, be it Baltimore, New York, uh, anybody else out, else out in the East, not to mention whatever team comes out of the National League, be it the Dodgers or whoever. So uh, there's no lack of desire in terms of bulking up when you are a team that's already at the top. you got to stay up there, and, and you've seen it from a, a lot of different teams already. You saw it from the Dodgers all offseason long. Nothing to say that the Rangers can't jump in there and, and try to pull a similar move to maintain their position as – as w- what they ended last year as the best team in baseball. Yeah, it's just interesting on, you know, what these teams actually want to give up because you look at the chat and you see AJ, our, our good pal, our diehard, uh, mentioning he'll take Wyatt Lankford and Jack Leiter. That sounds nice. It does sound nice. I don't think that any team's going to give up a top 10 prospect in baseball for Dylan Cease. That seems unfortunate. If Chris Getz holds out and gets a Wyatt Lankford, I'll be over the moon. I'll be going to the 35th and Shields and uh, is painting the town red. What does that mean? Painting the town red is like partying, having yeah. a good yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, all right, right, yeah. yeah. There we go. All Doja right, cool. Cat, paint the town red. Pardon? The song, paint the town red, Doja Cat. She explains it in there, too. Uh, no, no? I, I know of Do- Doja Cat, but I don't know that song in particular. No. Okay. This the, is a the, person or a cat? The kitties know. The kitties will know. This the is less confusing because yeah. I don't know whether she's saying kitties or kitties. She's saying the kitties <laughs> would be. The, kid, oh, okay. the kitties will the know. The young people. I still think there's she's going to be talking wait, about wait, a cat. Are you saying kid, K-I-D-D? Or? Yeah, like yeah, kitties. kitties. Like oh, okay. K-I-D-D-I-E-S. Right. Like the children. Yeah, okay. okay. Anyway, sorry. Hence my confusion. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got that now. Weren't yeah. you like the same age? I'm 24, I know Doja yeah. Cat is. I just okay. don't know that song. Okay. Yeah. You ever heard, you know the song Vegas from Elvis, the 2022 film uh, by Boz Lerman? No. No. The, the Doja Cat sings it. Oh. Yeah. See, look. So, we, so see, did you say the yeah. Doja Cat? I don't think so. Old man. I hope not. <laughs> um, anyways. Uh, Facebook, too. Wyatt Langford would be great, uh, but I don't think that's I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, would you do that one for one, or you'd have to have Jack Leiter in there, who has been struggling in his minor league career, even though he's highly touted? Well, but I mean, I don't even know. I mean, like you, you look at Spencer Jones; he's eighty fourth, and they barely would even include him in a package like the Yankees. So I I don't know. Uh, you look at the Padres; they have. Ethan Salas, who's 8th in baseball, Jackson Merrill, who's 12th, uh, and then Robbie Snelling, who's 36th, Dylan Lesko, who's 56th, and then mm-hmm. Drew Thorpe, who's 85th. Uh, like, y- you got some players who, you know, possibly could be a headliner from the uh, the Padres and Rangers, but, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It doesn't – this stuff is just kind of – this is why baseball isn't fun. No one is signed. There's this still is somebody, why? Blake Snell is a free agent still. Jordan Montgomery is a free agent still. Uh, there's probably 100 more that I could name and rattle off. Michael uh, Lorenzen. Michael Lorenzen's a free agent Did still. Did Solaire start and somebody, sign anywhere? Solaire signed with the Giants, I okay. think. Yeah. With Eight million outfielders. But... The Padres, I'm trying to figure out, and they did lose the Lugo and Waka, but they signed the Japanese player, I think Sasaki. They still have Darvish on the team. They still have San Diego's own Joe Musgrove on the team. Like Sasaki was a giant, no? Or, or something like that. Like They have star, a starting rotation that's fine. Yes, yeah, Dylan Cease will elevate it to the next level, but I don't know if they have, like, if they have to trade off of that major league roster to have room for Dylan Cease on that team because I think they're pretty solid in their uh, roster right now in their starting rotation. But as you said, Vinny, when they play that game in Korea and they see the the Dodgers like, fuck, (laughs) that shit is too good. We got to get better. We have to get better. And so why wouldn't they sign their old pitcher back when Blake Snow or sign Jared Lorenzen like themselves? Like, they've already given up a lot this offseason. I don't know. You did it. Jared Lorenzen. called him Jared Lorenzen. I told him I was going to see it. Pillsbury throw boy. I've always got it in my head. Why wouldn't they sign Michael Lorenzen? I know why they won't sign Jared Lorenzen. Rest in peace, kid. Also, he doesn't play baseball. Or didn't. Never played baseball. Hey. Maybe he might have. Don't limit him. Yeah. You don't know. You don't know that. At his house. Kentucky, uh, right? Kentucky Wildcats? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kentucky Wildcats. And then he was a, a New York giant. giant. New York football giant. Yeah. Uh, Jung-Hoo Lee. Jung-Hoo uh, Lee. The, the giant sign. That's, Solaire yeah, is an outfielder. Solaire is going to be the DH for the Giants as well. Giants uh, did a lot. They're they still did. not very good. They got Chapman. Hey. And Solaire. For and cheap. they lost Brian Bannister. Well, that happened before the last season was even over. I guess that's true. 
Um, I don't know. I don't even want to look at what their record was uh, after they lost Brian Bannister. All right, uh, let's take a break. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, Padres and Rangers. Uh, want to let you know about our friends over at Circa Sportsbook. Our friends over at Circa Sportsbook have tight money line splits and a low hold, mo- hold model. Games will strive to be a minus 110 split on the Circa Sports menu, unlike other sportsbooks, which may use a minus 115 or minus 120 split. Circa keeps as little money as possible on large market bets like futures and golf tournaments, especially compared to other books, which allow them to have and uh, take uh, advantage of this low hold model to offer to you the sports better. They don't want to limit players based on their winnings and they want you to get the best price possible. They're the world's largest sports book and most of, if not all the time, they will be able to offer the best line for you. They have the best line right now for the Bulls against the Pacers. Uh, you can get the Bulls to win tonight at plus 164 over on Circa Sportsbook. So download the Circa Sports Illinois app at circasports.com slash Illinois dash app. At circusportscom slash Illinois app to sign up today. Also be on the lookout for Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates. I know that there's one coming up with the start of March Madness um, that the Bears announced today on their show up in Waukegan. So that should be a fun time with our friends over at Circa. If you are somebody you, you if you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call one eight hundred Gambler one 426 two five three seven. Text GMB to eight three three two three four or visit Are You Really Winning I think we are talked in the Discord. Uh, one of these uh, people, I think it was AJ, said he's going to go to one of our takeovers. I'm sure Melissa's already got her tickets for the takeovers. We got three this year. May 27th, we're going to take over Guaranteed Rate Field. It's Memorial Day. Who else would you rather host than the Canada's team, the Toronto Blue Jays? KPW, come on down, too, while you're over here. June 24th, Shoei Otani and those Dodgers will be here at Guaranteed Rate Field, and so will we in Section 147. So go to allchgo.com right now and get your tickets. And the last one we'll have that is scheduled is August 9th versus the Cubbies. Cody Bellinger and the Cubs hit the south side. So the tickets will be in the 147 section. We will have fun, frivolity, hopefully a White Sox victory. Our last two takeovers as far as White Sox and Cubs not too good on the results, but the fun was everlasting. It was still good. Even though we saw the Christopher Morrell home run, we were there for history. We were there for a good time, not a long time. And you were there to see future Seattle Mariners injured list person Gregory Santos. <laughs> He's already on the injured list? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he is. Oh, God. Man, we were out here fleecing the Mariners. We're doing it like the, the Michael Soraka uh, David Wells type of trade where we send some uh, damaged goods over there to Seattle or you get hurt in Seattle. He was hurt last year. He was oh, hurt. my God. Oof. End of the season hurt. Chris Getz out here. He, like, never threw – like, that's the whole thing with Garrett Crochet. Like, yeah, it would be great to see Garrett, Cro- th- uh, Garrett Crochet throw 100 innings this season. His arm will likely fall off. Like, Santos finally threw over 60 innings. His arm fell off. Look you don't just throw 101 and just walk away fine. I could do it. Anyways. Did nope. you say I can, Sarah? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, what are you doing behind that desk? You should be pitching. Yes. I've been she doesn't I've been want working to brag. out. Huh? <laughs> she doesn't want to brag. She's just she producing is her passion. <laughs> yeah, we got who's your daddy committing to one? Melissa's committing to one. All diehard members. And guess what? They got twenty percent off of the total of these tickets to the event. Every single event that we have, you get 20% off if you are a diehard. So go to allchgo.com and become a diehard today. You get access to our Discord. You get to talk to Sean. You get to talk to Vinny. You get to talk to myself and these fine folks who are in the Discord every day. And, of course, you get access to what Vinny Duber put together, the CHGO White Sox Season Guide for 2024. Extensive research done by Vinny. He was down there in Arizona talking to these people. And then you get all the access and all the content right there in the season guide so you don't have to go everywhere else to find hey i just read something about um uh michael uh or eric fetty i want to go and read an article by eric fetty that Vinny wrote in this in spring training it's right there in the season guide only diehard members get access to that so go there right now and if you are a diehard member you get 20 percent off of all merch hats t-shirts glasses or our CHGO Chicago collection that has come out last week. You get 20% off if you are a diehard. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Go to allchgo.com right now and become a diehard so you can talk to all these people, even Sarah, because she rocks, apparently. Jared also is a CHGO diehard. We love Jared. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, All right. Uh, Do we feel like he's going to be traded before opening day? 
we ha- didn't we have this kind of I feel fervor like-, like in December, early December when there's like, oh, he's imminent, and we're all waiting. And then it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Well, it seemed, I, I mean, Ken Rosenthal sounding like the, the Rangers just needed to sign the dotted line, and then apparently their pen ran out of ink. <laughs> I mean, they've worked together. Him and Chris, well, not Chris Getz, Chris Young and the White Sox have worked together before on multiple deals. They can send D- Dane Dunning back. I'll be all good for that. Pretty sure Chris Young's a former Royal. That he is. That is it. Hey, look at you. Dayton Moore's uh, in the front office over there. Hey, hey, hey! I so mean, we, and that was uh, Chris Getz's are, like mentor. Are we doing an emergency podcast in like tonight? I hope not. I, hope, I, hope it, the phone, I don't want to be ringing on. on. Huh? Are we turning in the ringer on tonight? <laughs> yeah, you can get. Some I don't get, think it's. I mean, I don't listen. I have no idea, but I I would think that with the way that this has progressed throughout the off season, with teams uh, need. Being ratcheted up here during spring training, and still here we are just talking about it. I would think that this probably goes on a little bit longer. Well, also, that would be my that would be my thought. Do I know anything? No, but that would be my thought. The thing too, though, that I think plays into the White Sox favor is a the price. He's only eight million this year, and B he just struck out what eight in his last spring training start. He's pitching. He's on an actual team going through spring training, going through the work. Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery might be doing that on their own, but they're not actually in a camp in uh, an organization's actual workouts and stuff. So I think the White Sox have the leg up here because, hey, we have the cheaper guy who's ready to go. All you got to do is give us your best prospect. If the, if, if the, let's put it this way. If the reason Blake Snell has not been signed yet, if the reason Jordan Montgomery hasn't been signed yet is because they're asking for too much, there's no way you could look at Chris Getz and think that paying him $8 million for this year is going to be too much. You know what we need? Yeah. We need like a low jack on Chris Getz and see if he's, if he's traveling to Surprise or if he's going down to where the Padres go to spring training and having like a – you know, drinking a beer, that type of thing. We need to see who he's talking to. And then, yeah, maybe before opening day, like last night, they were in Surprise, Arizona, which where the Rangers uh, have their spring training. So maybe that's I believe they what, were in Goodyear last Goodyear? night, playing oh, the Reds, Goodyear? right? Oh, yeah, the Reds. Yeah. So Surprise and Goodyear are close, right? They're both on the west side, but they are on west opposite side? north and south sides. Okay, so let's put a low jack on him and see exactly where he's going. So we can know if he's in Peoria, he's with the Padres. And you want to inject him with one of those, like, dog tracking chips? Yeah. Yeah. They inject those? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. You didn't know that? No. Yeah. I've never had a dog. Well, I don't know if they inject it, but it's, it is in the dog's body. It might be implanted. The microchip. It's yeah. implanted, not injected. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Um, all right. Well, yeah. Uh, Kevin brings up that we need one top 100 prospect in the C-Steel. Uh the reports have said that the White Sox want one and a half times what the Orioles got for Corbin Burns. That's a lot. It Joey makes sense, Ortiz though. was 65th. But that makes sense. In mm-hmm. the top 100 prospect list. And then D.L. Hall was outside of the top 100 prospect list, was, but was formerly in it. Um, I think it makes sense, for sure. But, I mean, does that equate to anything in these these actual, like, organizations? Do you, like... I don't. I don't think there's a price that really adds up. Like, you know, AJ says there'll be a team that blinks on the price, but they're not going to blink and give you Jackson Merrill or Ethan Salas, no, no. you know, or or Wyatt Langford. Like, I don't think they're going to blink that much. I think the White Sox should do whatever they feel is the proper value for Cease. And if that person happens to be just outside of the hundred prospect or gradually, like DL Hall had been done, I, yeah, we'll poo poo it, but. They have their scouts out there. They know what they want, and especially if they're pitchers, Brian Bannister might have a specific person or people that he wants on another roster that he can mold in his image and wants to have pitch for the White Sox. So, yeah, I know what people are talking about. You don't want to get fleeced on the C steal, but if they feel like they're getting equal value or better value for what they got, I'll trust them for now until they show that they're untrustworthy. There's no reason for me to not believe in what uh, Chris Getz is going to be doing in his staff because he hasn't shown anything yet. I'm going to allow him to be the player or the uh, GM that he wants to be, and then through that, if he shows he's untrustworthy, then I won't trust him. I agree. Um, I would also like to see Drew Thorpe. He's in the Padres organization. He was a part of a, uh, a Dylan Cease trade. 
I'd be pumped. Uh, her, I mentioned his name to Herb, and then Herb started to see uh, highlights of his changeup. Just go watch highlights of Drew Thorpe's changeup. Uh, it's like better than Giolito's. Like it's a seventy grade changeup on your twenty to eighty uh, scale. And seventy is really good, despite being a C. <laughs> right. On for most of us. Okay. And yeah, yeah, right. C minus at so, that, Herb. And, and yes. really, too, like <laughs> you don't see eighties. So like seventy is really the best grade that you can get. And he's in San Diego. So if you think about changeups in this whole MLB, you think about Trevor Hoffman, and he's uh, going around there in Peoria, probably saying, "Hey, kid, yeah, you can use this grip, that grip." And they probably want to keep that guy. Once I saw that changeup, it's like they just acquired him though from the Yankees. Yeah, hey, man, <laughs> I would want to keep that guy. And his and his ETA is supposed to be either next year or this year. So he was lights out for the Yankees minor league staff. And so, if the White Sox can possibly get him, excellent. I'd be pumped. Uh, Blake Rutherford, what am I remembering him for? Why not? Washington Nationals, great. Blake Rutherford. Uh, I mean, Blake Rutherford could still probably be the White Sox opening day right fielder. Wow, no faith in Dom Fletch. No. I don't know why. Like, you there's so many people are poo pooing Dom tall Fletcher. to ride this ride. Like, he hasn't played a game for the White Sox yeah. yet, and I'm, the Discord is going wild for, like, oh, he sucks, he's bad already. I'm like, he hasn't played one solo game for the White Sox yet, and when he did play in the Major Leagues last year, pretty damn good. This is what it's like to root on Michael Kopech. All I want to see is Michael Kopech put past the demons that are within his head and, uh, you know, uh, finally reach his uh, physical potential. Uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting poo-pooed because he has two bad spring training starts. Like, okay. You know what? Like what? And he, if he goes out and you know strikes up the side like Nick Destrini in his next start, people are going to be like, "Oh, you know, goo gooing and ga gaing." Oh, I get what you're saying, Sean, but he's also had a track record of not being good in the major leagues, right? And but, I know, but, but what people are reacting is, is to like, their I, spring I, training stuff. I'm just saying though, like it seems like he has all the tools, and it seems like he's a really decent person who's been very open about the demons that he faces on a day-to-day -day basis. So it'd be nice to see him overcome those demons. And it's like, ah, oh, you go back defender. It's like, yeah, it'd be nice. I want that story, for you, Sean, too, be so you can stand on the stage just like you kind of stand on the stage of how Carlos Rodon became a champion as pitcher with the Giants and say, I told you, people, I told you. Is that Are you doing that for Michael Kopech, that he's going to have an outstanding year this year for the White Sox? I don't know. It would be nice, though. Oh, it would be nice. I don't know. Someone, someone could. I'm, that, be great. That's what I'm wondering. You're, you're going out on a limb on Michael Kopech. I wonder if you're going out on a limb for top 100 pitcher Michael Kopech. Is he that good as a starting rotation pitcher? Because otherwise, I would just, just like gonna, him to throw a strike. You're going to be very, very disappointed, I believe, at the end of the year. I mean, wait, so let's – let's. I don't, I don't really know that judgment. Like, so war, you'd have to throw, what, 120 innings? This is great radio. Uh, he'd have to have – was he not? Kopech. He'd have to be better than Trevor Williams last year, who had a negative .1 war. Could he be a top 100 pitcher? Yes. Starter, yes. Absolutely. He could be better than Trevor Williams. Can he? Was he? He, he, he wasn't last year. Not last year. That's, great question. I, <laughs> that's great, what I'm saying. Great question. No, I, I think he could. I mean, could he have a zero war? Yes. Uh, Please. Well, hey, to be fair, out of the uh, constraints of minimum 120 innings pitched, uh, Trevor Williams was 100. Uh, Michael Kopech is last out of he's 102 out of uh, out of 102 so he just needs to be two spots better i think he could be a top 100 pitcher uh <laughs> who throws 120 innings pitch because he might be the only like he, there might be 99 of them sean sean's all of a sudden finding this, li this limb to be very sturdy that he's gone yeah this on. this limb is pretty <laughs> it's not that I, yes michael Ko kopech with the minimum of 120 innings pitched, will be a top 100 pitcher will he get to in Major League Baseball. Innings? Yes. <sighs> Whew, Sean. They're right. signing Michael Lorenzen to have someone to pitch innings. They need somebody to pitch those innings. Who is going to pitch those innings, Herb, 
Why am I? Why is this a who Sean? If I said this two weeks ago, I wouldn't be getting a who Sean. Because you're going like you're going F out of here. We get in the show. You are going out on a big time limb right there. You're, wait, how? I just said there's a hundred. There might just be ninety nine pitchers that throw one hundred and twenty innings. What? How many times he's thrown one hundred and twenty innings? Uh, since he has well, twice, but like, right? Anyone could say anything. I'm, you asked me a question. I don't know. I'm just shocked that we haven't gotten to the news of the day. Lenny and Sosa going back to AAA. Oh, sorry, Herb. He's only thrown it once because he reached 119 and a third. So out of his four innings, uh, one ended because he had Tommy John. Uh, mm-hmm. So they threw 14 innings. They didn't pitch in 2019 or 2020. Yep. And then in 2021, in 44 games, 69 and a third. Then 119 and a third and 129 and a third. He is absolutely throwing 120 innings this year. Okay. Lenin Sosa got demoted. He got cut today from camp. So uh, two of the people that I projected would be on the opening day roster are already have already been cut. Now it's Braden Shoemake versus uh, Danny Mendick, Zach Remillard, and Zach Remillard, Danny Mendick. All right, uh, you guys got a leader in that clubhouse. Um, I'll say Zach Danny Remillard. Mendick. Wait, okay. we said it at the same time. Go ahead, Herb. Zach Remillard. I think Sean's Danny Mendick thing might be catching fire. Plus, he just homered. Did he? Yeah. Let's go, Danny Mendick. <laughs> uh, all right, that's Vinny Duber. You can follow him at ch or you can follow him at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. That's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him at Eckerwall Twenty Three. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. You can follow the show at CHGO underscore White Sox. Thank you to Sarah for producing the show. You're we'll welcome. talk to you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Goodbye. <laughs> City like the mayor.